Hi again, Wes Estridge, DCS Facilitators and Consultants, here at the Veteran Standout in beautiful sunny Florida. We have a gentleman right here who uh, serves veterans. He is a passionate young man. I have had an opportunity to see him on stage along with some other folks talk about how they serve homeless veterans. With that in mind, sir, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? My name is Tyce Ridley. Um, I'm a medically retired major from the Army um, after 18 years. Um, I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress in 2013, and I went through the government's version of treatment, and they sent me to a facility uh, where I was the only veteran in my class because the VA had a two-month waiting list. Um, and so I was around a bunch of people that were nothing like myself, and I didn't find it beneficial at all. Uh, and then when I returned to Chicago, where I was stationed at the time, uh, my wife was having some issues getting counseling because there's not a lot of military personnel around there. And the, the therapist really didn't know how to deal with a spouse with post-traumatic stress disorder. And so the first thing out of one of their mouths was, why don't you just leave her? And it wasn't because I was violent or anything like that. I was on a medication that made me like a zombie where I, I was just a walking zombie. All I did was on uh, sleep and um, and so she couldn't find the appropriate help, and I went to a, a course, Commander General Staff College, and the course was taught in a, uh, at Fort Dix, New Jersey, and the classroom was in the shape of a U. And when I was in that class for two weeks, um, because the class was in the shape of a U, everyone could cross-talk to one another, and it was a, a rigorous course, and we were up to 2.30 in the morning doing homework and in class at 7.30, but during those breaks, I got to talk to people other majors and, and senior captains that had deployed multiple times, most of them had families, and they were people just like me. And so when I returned home, I said to my wife, that was more therapeutic than anything the Army or the VA ever did for me. And so we came up with the concept of the Circle of Veterans, and then once we talked about that, she said, well, if you're going to do that, then you have to do something for the spouses and the children because we get left out of everything. So our program is, is completely inclusive of the entire family. Um, we have, we say, come for a, come for an hour, come for a day, come for one of our four-day retreats. We do alternative therapies. Um, the main one is equine therapy, teaching people how to trust. Um, horses are skittish, and so are people in post-traumatic stress. So when the people are working with the horse, they learn how to trust one another. And then we do, we end up doing a lot of journaling after that. And it brings out a lot of things that. For me, it brought out things that I didn't even know I was angry about. Um, but I was able to write them down, and then after that, I was able to let them go. Um, we do RRT and ART, which are forms of advanced hypnosis uh, that help people forget. So, for example, my flashbacks. If I wanted to see them, any, I couldn't see them anymore. If I wanted to see them, all I see is a white screen. And then the program rounds everything out with, um, we teach yoga and meditation daily. Uh, and that's sort of the veteran and the family members have something that they can take home and they can do on their own every day. Wow, you know, that, that, you said a mouthful. Uh, I've been working with veterans for over a decade now. Uh, I know in the Hampton Rose area, the VA hospital, they're big on uh, CBT. Uh, how do you feel about that? I know you didn't say that when you were talking about the other like the third, a cognitive behavior third. Um, we don't. Is that an exposure therapy? Yes. Yes, we don't believe in exposure therapy. Okay. Uh, it doesn't work. It, it works in some people, okay. but as somebody who's been through trauma, I don't want to relive it over and over and over gotcha, again. Gotcha, gotcha. So our program, especially when we're dealing with people with military sexual trauma, we don't want to put those people through that same thing over and over and over again. So all of our programs are, are based on non-exposure to, to the trauma. I like that. When you were on stage, I heard you say something about each day is something different. Uh, was that you or was that the other young lady said? No, that was the Veterans Alternative. They ha are not Veterans Alternative. That was uh, North Tampa Behavioral Health. Um, they have a live-in program for um, addiction and alcoholism. And okay. Now, do you have a website? Yes. Our website is www.thecircleofveterans.org. Okay. Now, you also stated about the three criteria if you come in your point to this country, one, two, or three. Can you explain that? Yeah. We, we, um, we have two PhD mental health professionals that we work with, and we also have a couple of other licensed counselors. But what we found was when we were registering with the insurance companies and things like that, I would have the insurance company call my cell phone or the client would 
call my cell phone and then I would have to redirect them to call someone else. And my wife said, you know, that's not good if you're dealing with veterans who are already in distress to make them write a number down and then call somebody else. So we found a phone system for us that works where the individual calls our 866 number and it says, if you're a veteran and you want to speak to Tyson and you have questions, press one. If you're a spouse and you want to talk to Samantha and you have questions, press two. If you want to register um, and schedule, press three. And then that way it goes directly to the therapist's office and we don't have to tell them, we don't have to redirect them to call another number. Outstanding, man. That's the, that's the first time I've seen that or even heard of that. And so when I heard you say that, I said, man, that's just nice and simple. Nice and easy, man. How long have you been uh, operating your organization? I retired in August of 2014. Uh, we purchased the farm in November. just send them to the, directly to the therapist um, because it doesn't make sense for our therapists have their own practices so for them to break free of their practice and come to the farm for one or two people it doesn't make sense but once we get the equine portion going uh, then it will have constant four-day retreats okay okay now do you see people outside of the state of Florida we, we have a long waiting list of people outside the cell. Well, the problem is we don't have funding um, to pay for lodging and travel. Um, and we have a, we don't keep the people on our property. We wanted, but initially that was the plan, but it's just going to be too much expense for digging up the ground to put in septic tanks and wells and stuff like that. So now we, we have a deal with a local hotel that's 12 minutes away from um, from our farm, and they give us the government rate, which is $15 a night, and it's tax free because we're a viable one. Um, that's all right. Hey man, I appreciate you sharing this information, man. Uh, one of the reasons why we came out here is to learn best practices. And again, as we continue to add to GCS facilitators in Cap Cabana, the trauma informed care facility that we operate in Brooklyn, Missouri, we're always looking for some, somebody that's innovative and something that's new and fresh and is passionate and not the bureaucracy to deal with the federal government. Yeah, I, I, when anybody that comes to the farm, I mean, the first thing I tell them is this place is as much for me as it is for anybody else. I mean, this program is as much for me as it is for anybody else. Um, we have property at the beach. Um, we have like, three units at the beach in Madeira Beach, Florida, there's St. Pete Beach. And we use those as vacation rentals to support the yes. farm financially. Yes. But I could have retired and gone to live at the beach. Um, yes. But that wasn't my passion. My passion was to come here. And so you're doing this on your own dime, no federal funding or anything like that? It's completely self-funded up to this point. We've got one $500 donation from a local Kiwanis Club. Um, and we've got um, the United Way. That's what I was trying to okay. United Way is coming out next week to evaluate the program. And so hopefully they can provide some funding um, after that. Okay. How, how about D.C.? Have you, have you been up there? You got, have you advocated on Capitol Hill? Have you talked to the legislators and, and, and see if they can come in and, and, and try to assist you in any, any kind of way? Yeah, we've got, um, I have a son who's at West Point and he interned with a congressman a couple of years ago and through that internship he got me in what I thought was going to be a private meeting with the congressman but he had a reporter in there. Yeah. Um, but we talked to him about alternative therapies and I was in there with two of my doctors and we talked to him about what we needed and he basically gave us everything we needed, everything we asked for uh, in terms of alternative therapies. It, it's in a bill called the Cover Act, which passed in the Congress, I believe, last month, 468 to or something like that. But it's sitting in the Senate right now. And what that bill will do is authorize the VA to pay for they got their the research of alternative therapies, the ones that we provide. They now. brought your flag back? That way the VA yeah. They ever brought our flag pull back. That way the VA can sponsor those activities and we don't have to always be looking for grants and loans and 
Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Tice, right? Yes. Hey, you're doing outstanding work, man. Keep up the good work. And we're going to stay in contact. Uh, uh, anytime you need any assistance from me, you pick up the phone. And I'll do the same. Awesome. Right. Thank, thank you. you. All right, thank you. All right.